All right, today we're going to show you a Shigia. <clears throat> this is a model G30. Uh, it's currently wired for 220 volts, three phase. Uh, it has an ID attachment, a fold down ID attachment with it. Uh, also has over on the table uh, an additional uh, three point steady rest and a table mounted uh, diamond dresser, uh, some, some drive dogs, a toolkit with some stuff in it, uh, some wheel removal tools. Uh, balancing arbor and some um, ID spindles, an additional wheel, I think I said that, and then you have uh, uh, 12 uh, balancing uh, leveling pads for it. So over here you have uh, again the fold down tails, uh, fold down ID attachment with no small quills over here. I'm going to screw into this unit up here. It has a left hand thread I believe. Tailstock is pretty beefy. Uh, this is a Morse taper number four, I'm pretty sure. Uh, you have an adjustment back here. This is to adjust for a slight amounts of taper so you don't have to adjust the, the full length of the table. Uh, when you're doing certain types of parts, you want to adjust the tailstock. Uh, again, since this is a fairly large machine, you ha also have the option rather than opening the tailstock uh, by this lever, you can uh, set it a certain way so that you can open and close the tailstock. Uh, with this and they do that sometimes when they lower heavy parts down and you just want to close it you know slowly for whatever reason. Workhead, uh, this workhead can swivel a couple of screws that you have to loosen and it swivels you have a jog button again I believe this is a Morse tape at number four uh, this is a live and dead uh, setup in other words you can have a face plate and a chuck on here or you can grind between centers like it was uh, being used uh, by this previous owner or the way it's set up right now. Um, and then this would be your drive dog. So up here you have a Mitsutoyo digital readout uh, for the x-axis or for the wheel slide only. Over here you have a variable speed control for the grinding wheel so you can adjust the speed of the grinding wheel and this apparatus here, this is a MARPOS, uh, this is what they call a gap eliminator. Uh, this uh, allows you, if you're, if you're you know, really grinding production and uh, wanted to optimize the grinding cycle, the time, uh, this cycle when it starts has a certain travel in it before it goes into its coarse feed and then its fine feed. Uh, so they use this to uh, actually come in and touch your workpiece and it notices it right away because there's a microphone, very sensitive microphone built into the spindle. As soon as uh, even the coolant and everything getting close to the part with the wheel, it triggers this and automatically puts the machine into the uh, coarse feed uh, as opposed to the rapid approach. Um, not exactly sure how, how Shigia does it, but that's the idea of that. If you're, if you're trying to shave seconds off your parts, you can incorporate that in your cycle. If that's not your goal, uh, then uh, this is not going to be used. I'm not using it. The machine works fine without it. So let's go ahead and start it up. Um, grinding wheel is going to start up slowly because it's a variable speed. And up here you can control the speed. I have the dogs close together so it doesn't take too long. Uh, you got two grinding modes. You got traverse and you've got plunge. Also in the center you have manual. And this will be uh, your cycle start button. So your headstock starts, your wheel moves forward, uh, your table starts to move in traverse. And each time we get to the end, uh, we're going to see a little bit of feed there. Now it has two feeds. It has a coarse feed, which it's doing now, and it has a fine feed. The indicator lights on the operator panel tell you that you're in the grinding mode. Uh, the green light when it comes on will let you know that you switch from the coarse feed to the, to the fine feed which is set by the operator on the dial in the front of the machine. Um, so 
So as this feeds down toward zero, I'm only taking five thousandths off. So now we've reached the fine feed. You see the green light come on. When we reach the dead stop, the final size, uh, you're going to get the size light to come on and we're going to start our spark out. Now in the traverse grinding mode, the spark out is a counter. So it counts uh, there and back and there and back as you know one count. So now we got the size on. So now we're starting our empty passes where we're no longer going to feed. There's a timer on the other side of the tailstock that you can't see right now that you can adjust from 99 of these strokes to uh, just one or two. So it finishes up, <clears throat> always finishes up at the end of the part and won't pop off in the center. If you want to switch now to plunge grinding, all you really have to do is turn your table off and push this switch over to plunge. And now when I hit the cycle start button, it's just going to move forward. The work head's going to come on and we're going to feed down continuously. These speeds and increments when you, when you traverse the, the pick feed are all controlled with these dials here. These dials and the two timers on the front cabinet uh, work together to give you a, a pick and in this case these to give you the smooth uh, plunge. So now we've got the fine, the spark out is on, the red light we're going to kick out. When it kicks out, this backs up the mount that you ground off your workpiece. Again, I'm only taking five thousandths off because I just want to do it quickly. <clears throat> now get down to zero, the light comes on. and it kicks out. So in plunge there's actually, there's actually another timer uh, where you set between uh, 0 and 60 seconds just for a time actually, not a stroke count. So there's two counters, one for traverse grinding and one for plunge grinding. So you've noticed I guess uh, this ID thing hanging here. So what that is has a pin on the side you can pull out and as soon as I go and move this it's going to automatically shut off the grinding wheel. Then you would bring this down. There's a couple of bolts here that you would secure in there, but we're not going to do that right now. Um, you could traverse grind automatically, so I'm going to move my dogs kind of close together. Turn my table on. And go from plunge over to traverse. Now you got to start the machine again. This time when it starts up, the hydraulics will start up and everything. It's going to be this motor, not the external motor. You have a little guard here that you can use to cover your wheel up. All right, so now when I press the cycle start button, this is going to come forward. And we're going to start a regular grinding cycle. If you want, you can you can set this up to to feed your part automatically. Now also, I don't know if anybody noticed, because the camera is on the wrong angle, that your work head is now going clockwise rather than counterclockwise. When we were OD grinding, external grinding, this was going in this direction toward the operator. So when you're ID grinding, it goes in a different direction on its own. Although the grinding wheel itself is still grinding on the inner wall closer to the operator. So this is going to work its way down to zero. It already did. And it, it backed up, but it only backed up on the hand wheel. Once this thing came forward, when it sees it, it's made the switch to fold this down. It no longer allows this to go back automatically. When I start my cycle, I'm going to start it from the front position. This is going to start the feed now. And when it gets down to zero, it takes a few minutes. Do we see that? What's going on here? We 
get to zero, we got our size light on now. The hand wheel backs up, but the slide does not go back. Why? Because they don't want the quill to break off inside of your workpiece. So generally they want you to work with this by hand, or if you're going to use an automatic cycle like this, it's not going to retract, and you don't want it to retract. But it did back up here the amount of stock you removed. So that's uh, pretty much everything. Behind the machine is a uh, substantial paper band coolant system with a magnetic separator. This automatically advances the, the paper when it gets dirty or gets clogged up. It, it causes a, a float switch to activate. This is your hydraulic unit hooked up behind the machine. And then there's even another little tank back there with uh, spindle oil, special spindle oil for the external wheel. So that's a lot of information. Uh, it's good information for any Shigia. Now we didn't go into this infeed thing here, that's a whole other thing, but there are YouTube videos I've made on that dial. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. That's the Shigia G30. Thank you very much.